Hi everybody, welcome to the District Stitcher. I'm Judy and I live in the District of Columbia and I cross stitch, hence the name the District Stitcher. This is floss tube number 14. I know it's been a bit of a gap in time since I recorded. Um, also, I'm not wearing any makeup today because I just don't feel like it. So this is this is what you get. Uh, this is, again, as mentioned, a channel that's primarily about cross stitch. So I look forward today to going through all my projects and updates with y'all. Um, again, I know it's been a little while, um, but I don't know about you, but January for me is is hibernation month so i just haven't haven't wanted to do anything other than like curl up under blankets and read because it's it's my bear time <laughs> so it's just i don't know if that's seasonal depression or just going with the seasons but um i just have been very low on energy and motivation but it's february now so let's hop into it so i do have a couple finishes um, I will start with, actually, I did two projects that were non-cross stitch. Um, I have a little weeding loom. It's like a little lap loom just for tapestries, and I had bought it during lockdown. Um, because, I don't know, I was just buying a bunch of random stuff during isolation and COVID. Like, who wasn't? Uh, but I did, um, I started making little bookmarks. And so I did one, I wanted to do a rag rub. But obviously my loom isn't really big enough. Um, but I did I did a little rag rug bookmark. Which looks super cute, but it's not actually a very good bookmark because it's too thick. But it's cute. Uh, so you know it has that going for it. And then I did, this one is a belated birthday present for a friend of mine who is very big into, I mean we all are in our little friend group, very big into the Sarah J Moss books, A Court of Thorns and Roses, and all that kind of stuff. So this is, I wove a little black bookmark and then embroidered on um, some imagery from those books. And I just I just sewed a little piece of felt on the back. And this is again kind of thick, but it's it'll look cute, like next to all her Court of Thorns and Roses stuff. So those are my two. Um, I did do another bookmark that was a little looser woven, so it was thinner, uh, but I've already sent that to my mom for her birthday, so I don't really have it to show. Um, but those are my little projects that I did that were non-cross stitch related. Um, occasionally those will be thrown in. I do do a lot of crafts. You can probably, oops, wrong way. You can probably see on the couch behind me that blanket. I did crochet that um, eons ago, so I knit, I crochet, I sew, I do I stitch everything, every kind of stitch. I needle felt, I, I don't know. I pick up crafts. My hobby's collecting hobbies. So, um, but to continue on with cross stitch, I do have two finishes. They are not finally finished. I have not finally finished anything. I have a little pile of projects that is my to fully finish. Um, not final finish. It's like it's final fantasy. To fully finish. Um, like stuff that I'm not going to get framed, that I'm going to do some other sort of finishing with. So, um, first up, let me take the all of these back, it's better. First up, I did finish um, August out of the Waxing Moons monthly trios. And normally I put the pattern up for you, but I mean, this one's done, so. He's cute. I love the little happy crab. He's so happy. So that just leaves September, October, November, and December that I need to finish before those months roll up this year so that I have the whole calendar year. And when I finish them all, I will do a little parade of the ones that I have. I've got February on my door right now. Um, actually, let me, I can show you the goal real quick. So this is June, um, and this is how I finished it. The other ones I put like little ribbons on and stuff. And honestly, I like when I finished June, I liked how simply it was done. Um, so I think I'm going to go back and re finish these maybe at some point and take off some of the extra ribbons and stuff and just kind of keep it this simple, um, this simple finishing to really let the stitches be the star. So I, uh, oops, I skip. I'm going to get a lint on it. <laughs> so it's got, um, it's just got some batting behind it, and then it's honestly 
I would love to say that I laced it onto a board, but I didn't because I'm lazy. I glued it. So what? Uh, and then I hot glued it to this board, which again is also just uh, glued down some fabric from Aileen's. And then a uh, um, magnetic tape. It's like it's magnets, but it's got uh, an adhesive on the back. And it comes in a roll, like a tape roll. So that's what, that's how it is. And then this goes on the front door of our condo is um, metal clad. So it just magnets onto it and sits in, I have like four seasonal wreaths and these sit inside the wreath. It looks super cute. Um, forgive me for the sniffles. It's also this time of year with all the dry winter air, my sinuses are just a hot mess. Uh, I'm not sick, I just I'm a hot mess. And in general, I'm a hot mess. I definitely look like a mess today. So this is what you get, though. Um, and I don't think, I mean, we're all cross-stitchers. Like, we're not here for makeup tutorials or anything. So um, my other finish that I want to show you is I stitched over Christmas, and I think I showed it in progress, but I finished it, The Little Penguin by Crocetta Gogo. Crocetta Gogo? They're Italian, so I think it's maybe Crocetta Gogo. I will look that up at some point and try to get it pronounced or find someone who speaks Italian. If you speak Italian, like, let me know how it's actually pronounced. Anyway, here is the little penguin. Let me see if I can get it. Yeah, I'm trying to center it. There we go. He's so cute. I love him so much. He is my little fat penguin son. I adore him. Um, it was really fun to stitch. I really enjoyed stitching it. Um, the colors are pretty. It's just, it was just such a cute pattern. The little cookies and stuff all around him were easy to stitch, came together quickly. Like, it's just absolutely adorable and I loved it. So, um, that is him. I am probably going to finish him like this I'm better. I'm going to finish him as a pillow. Um, the pattern has the picture and I've seen a cute uh, a cute version where it's got it's finished as a pillow but it's got like the fuzzy stuff around it. It's a very technical term, the fuzzy stuff. So that is probably what I'm gonna do with him. I do I just I love him so much. So uh <laughs> That is, those are my finishes. I've been working on a lot of different projects, so I don't have any additional finishes. Um, however, oops, I've got a tangling thread on that. Let me just pull that to the back there. I will show you that does, is a good segue into my whips. Because what I was using as a backing board was the back of this pattern. So this is Shannon Christine's Sugar Plum Village. It's absolutely adorable. Um, I, it's a lot of stitching. It's a lot of very enjoyable stitching, but there's a lot of little stitches in this. There's a lot of little, you can tell it's very busy. There's a lot of stuff going on in that little pattern. Um, but I did finish page one of the pattern and now I'm fairly well into page two. So let me, the light kind of, I'm sorry, it's not great light today. Um, the light kind of washes out the pink. Let's see if I can get it a little better. There we go. So you can see. The pink is really pretty. So I'm stitching it on this Lugana. It's a wild orchid. I think it's from Zweigart. Don't hold me to that though, I don't remember who it's by. I just remember that it's called Wild Orchid and I got it on, uh, it's 36 count and I got it off um, 123 stitch. But this is it. I think it is so pretty on this. Hold it back here, you can probably get a better. Yeah, the colors are a little truer there. It's so pretty on this purple, which I picked because it was. It was Sugar Plum Village. I wanted it to be a little plummy. Um, although sugar plums aren't actually plums. I don't know if you know that. They're actually 
So you take, you make like a paste of like ground nuts and dried fruit, which I guess you could use dried plums in it. Um, and you make them into little balls and you put a little, you make them look like little plums and then you roll them in like purple colored sugar, I think. Or just roll them in sugar and they look like little, you put a little mint leaf in there and they look like plums. Um, I've never made them, but I watched someone make them on TikTok and I was like, oh, that's what they are. Um, but I also wanted to stitch this one because I think it's cute. It's just absolutely adorable, but also, uh, jokingly, my husband and I started years ago just calling each other increasingly stupid um, pet names as a joke, and then Sugar Plum stuck. Um, so he calls me Sugar Plum all the time. So, yeah, stitching Sugar Plum Village. Um, it was just one of those things where we were trying to get each other's attention, and we're like, babe, darling, love, Sugar Plum. Like, and I don't know, sugar plum for some reason stuck, so it's a it's an inside joke. Um, the other project that I worked on is, I really do, I love this project because I'm stitching it on a higher count in Ghana. So it's nice, and after I've been like squinting, <laughs> sugar plum village, like it's nice to have a kind of higher count fabric, um, bigger stitches to stitch. Um, Although I do get, I, I love how it looks with the colors, but I do get a little tired of the color repetition. So I'll stitch on it for a bit and then I'll put it aside and pick up something else. Um, but this is Hive Rules. Um, which I'm sure a lot of you, if you are a watcher of floss tube like I am, you would have seen this all over the place. Um, I like Primrose Cottage Stitches charts a lot. And I'm sorry. Sugar Plum Village is by Shannon Christine Designs. Um, I mean, it says that on the pattern, but I should have also said it out loud. My apologies. Um, but yeah, High Rule by Primrose Cottage St Stitches. Um, I love these colors. That's why I picked it up. Um, and I, I like it on just the plain white background. Um, so I took it out of the hue snap. You're welcome. Uh... <laughs> I hate taking things out of cue snaps and frames because it's always such a pain in the butt to get it back in. Uh, and now I'm bringing a, um, I'm bringing my needle to the back. Hold on, real quick. Which I should have done before I started filming, but hey, look, it was just, I'm a hot mess, but I'm getting it filmed. So that's something. So here is where I am so far. Get more light there. There you go. So high rules. I've got, you know, I'm just finishing up each motif as I go. It's nice that there's not a lot of back stitching. Um, so I've been down here working in this mind your own beeswax and um, finished that one. And now I'm on the, I think it's always be humble and kind. So I'm just filling in that, that B box there. So yeah. This is where it is. Should be kind of long, but I intend to, this was the called for fabric. So I intend to get it framed and then I'm going to give it to my niece. My niece has uh, two little girls now, um, which I'll talk about in my life update section because I can't remember if I, I don't remember if I talked about it last time or not. I don't know why my face is all itchy today. I think it's again the dry air and my skin is itchy. Um, so speaking of my niece and her daughters, I am working slowly but surely on stockings, uh, dimension stockings for both my grand nieces. Um, I just, I haven't actually, I'm really only working on the one right now and I bought the kit for the second one. Um, but this is, this will be for one of my grand nieces. And I went with, when I bought it, I went, I liked the kind of cartoony style and I was like, oh, and it'll be a little less complicated to stitch than some of the other ones. It's not at all. <laughs> I mean, I should have known it's a dimensions kit. Um, but here we are. I'm an idiot. I do. I am using the kit Ada 
that comes with it because it's this nice kind of frosty blue. <clears throat> Excuse me. So even though it's a little stiff, uh, that doesn't bother me because I put it on a frame. Um, so I can just push and pull the needle through. Um, I don't, I can stitch in hand. I just, I don't tend to. Um, I tend to prefer frames. Um, even though it just, stitching in hand is a little faster. And if you've never, if you're new and you're not sure what stitching in hand means, it's where you, you, like, hold the fabric and, like, you're sewing. And it's, it's also called the sewing method. So you're sticking the needle in and through, in and up, and pulling it through. Um, it is a little faster. I find my hands cramp when I do that. So, I don't know, maybe I'm just, like, holding it too tight, or I just am too tense a person. It's just, it's not my preferred way of sewing. I'll just stick it in a Q-snap, and I'm fine with it. This one I have on a stand so that I can, it's a little faster because I can pass, pass the needle through and back up really quickly. Um, but then my shoulder gets tired. But, you know. Such is life. But yeah, this is how it looks. And then I am not taking this off of the stand because the stand is the pain in the butt to get stuff on. It is not, it is not one of those fancy stands that you see a lot of floss tubers have. It is a very, um, cheap <laughs> stand. <laughs> got it off Amazon. Uh, so I've got some alligator clip things on it to, um, steady the fabric as well. So here is, here's where I'm at. And this top part is interesting because this is like five threads on a half stitch pulled through. So that took forever. But it is very pretty. And I like stitching on it because it's very colorful. Oh, I have very little room here. There we go. Um, it's very colorful, so it's not, it's not like a lot of other winter stitches where it's very, you know, white thread oriented, very kind of typical dark colors and things. So it's, it's, um, it is fun to do. So we'll see. I'm just gonna, I am a seasonal stitcher-ish, um, but I am, I mean, obviously high rules doesn't really fall into a season um in my mind but i am still working on sugar plum village and i'll continue working on this um until i don't want to anymore that's that's kind of how i stitch this thing it's all stitch until i don't want to work on it anymore so uh and sometimes i get very into you know the change of seasons and the colors of seasons and the themes of seasons i didn't really do much for summer summer wise um so I think it just, for me, it just really depends on the mood that I'm in. I guess I would say potentially instead of being a seasonal stitcher, I'm a mood stitcher. So it really depends on the mood that I'm in. Um, and speaking of moods, I was in the mood for a little bit of spring. So I, and also I loved the little penguin so much, I remembered that I had bought the little hen a while ago. Let's see if I can get it to focus. There we go. And um, it's, a, it's in the sort of same style. It's got this sort of similar border, little motifs. So I got... For Christmas, my um, husband's aunt, who is also a cross stitcher, uh, bought me a gift certificate to. Um, sorry, just again blew my throat at the back here. Uh, bought me a gift certificate to One Two Three Stitch. Um, is that's I have a wish list there, so she just bought me a gift certificate. Um, and I haven't gotten very far, but I just started it this week. I just started stitching it on a natural count linen, 36 count. No, I'm sorry, 32 count. And previously when I said 36 count, what I meant was 32 count. I always, I for some reason I keep doing that. 
I stitch on 32 count most of the time. The equivalent of like, what, 18 count stitch? No. 16 count stitch? Yeah, it's like 16 count Ada or something like that. Anyway, I stitch on 32 count most of the time because that's a comfortable... It's comfortable for me, but it's small enough that it looks dainty, um, but it doesn't look microscopic like some of the 40 count. I really admire people who stitch on 40 count. Um, I have no interest in doing so. I may change my mind at some point and do a thing on 40 count, but as it is, 32 count is about as small as I go. Um, but this is uh, 32 count, just a natural linen, which I believe was just the called for linen. Um, and so I just have a little wee start on the border. And that is where I am. But the colors are so pretty. Um, so it's really nice to have that. And also they stitch up quick, so hopefully by the next time I film I'll be mostly done, if not already done. We'll see. Um, I don't have anything for haul. We are... I'm trying to be better about budget. And I'm also trying this thing this year, we'll see how long it lasts, of if I buy anything, it is to kit up a pattern that I already have. And it's just, it's both a space thing, obviously, because we're in a condo in DC, but it is also, I bought all these patterns, I like these patterns, I want to stitch these patterns. I also have a big chunk of magazines um, that I want to get through and pull some patterns out and kit those up and stitch them as well. So that's kind of my goal for this year is to get those. Um, if I start a new project, it is going the pattern is going to be one that I already own, if that makes sense. Uh, so it's not that I'm not buying anything, it's that I am not stitching from stash, but buying to stash, I guess, kidding up things that I have for new starts. Um, although I am going to try to, <laughs> I am out of, I'm out of project bags. So I have to, um, I have to finish something so that I can free up a project bag, unless I get a new project bag. Although I'm trying to, I don't have any room for any project bags, but my sister-in-law, I showed her all of my cross stitch. She also cross stitches, she just quilts and sews more often than she cross stitches. So I showed her all the cross stitch project bags um, that I have and just like, like as an example, like the, I really like the vinyl front ones and these, actually all of the ones I have are from Little Boat 88 on Etsy. Um, she's Canadian, so it takes a while to get it shipped to the U.S. Um, but I just really like hers. So, um, that's where I bought mine from. And, uh, so I showed her all those and so she is now determined to start making some, um, Mostly, I think, just for her own projects and stuff. But, you know, if she happens to gift me one, then, oh, oh boy, I can start a new project. Ooh. Uh, but until that happens, I'm going to try to stitch through what I have so I can finish a project and free up a project bag before I start a new one. Um, that said, I do have... <laughs> I do have three projects that have thread and fabric that are waiting for a project bag. Um, so I don't really have a great place to keep those. I'm just trying to keep them together before I lose them. So that is also part of why I'm trying to um, really work on Sugar Plum Village to maybe free up that project bag. So we'll see if that, we'll see if that works. Oh, it's a lot of stitching in Sugar Plum Village. Um, and I may, I don't necessarily want to be stitching a Christmas stitch into summer. It's a bit much. We'll see. Plans change. That's why I don't tend to. I see all these really cool videos this time of year that are people who are doing their planning videos for the year. They're, um, you know, doing what they're going to do for, like, what's it called? The whip bingo thing. Whip go. Um, and all that stuff. And everybody has, like, the, the book of days uh, planning calendar thing. Um, I have to do so much planning for my work, uh, and other stuff that I just don't want to do that with my hobbies. Also, 
putting it in a book and putting it down as my plan is a surefire way to ensure that I don't actually do that. I will do something else. I have to go where my brain leads me. She is her own mistress. Uh, and I just say, yes, ma'am. So that is, that is kind of the state of things for me is it's not, you'll see in some past videos, I'm like, yeah, and I plan to do this and I plan to do this. And then I didn't work on any of it. So, uh, if I'm going to stitch, I will stitch on what I feel like stitching in the moment. Um, so I don't, uh, getting, I digressed a bit, but getting back to haul, I don't, it's not really haul, I didn't buy it, but my sister-in-law had this pattern from, it was her grandmother's, and she was pretty much sure that she was never going to actually stitch it, and I really loved it, so I took, she gave me the pattern. Um, I have no idea when I'll stitch it, but it's this guy. There we go. So that's Santa of the Forest by Lavender and Lace. Um, my husband and my sister-in-law's grandmother did a lot of cross-stitching. And I think I talked before about getting back into it by finishing one of the pieces that she didn't finish before she passed away. Um, but she had a whole stash of lavender and lace patterns um and so my aunt in law is that even a term my husband's aunt um like i said she's also a cross stitcher and she has a lot of her mom's stuff um and so she and emily and i have been going through and like if it's something that she hadn't stitched we've kind of been parceling out the pattern so that one of us might stitch it um just for, and not that we couldn't stitch something that she'd already stitched, but I don't know. I feel like there's already one of them in the family circle. We don't need two. Um, but uh, this actually was a duplicate. Emily had bought this pattern. My sister-in-law, Emily, had bought this pattern and then accidentally bought two of them or already had it or something like that. So I took it from her. So it's uh, the Celtic Christmas one, Noel. And so she is going to be stitching this one. And so I think what I'm going to do is look up a different, like a recolor of it, like a different color and like change up the color, like maybe, maybe swap the green and the reds so that ours are similar, but a little bit different. Um, I think that could be really fun. So I don't know. That's a, those are, those are at some point projects. Those are not. Those are probably not going to happen this year. I've got enough big projects going on. Um, so yeah, that is that is the status of my cross stitching life right now. Um, for life, get to life updates. So if you're done, if you're only interested in the stitching, we're good. You can go. Uh, the if you are here for just chatting and life updates and stuff, it is. Um, like everything's fine I just like I said life in January for me is like it's the rest month it is I just want to curl up on the couch and read or I want to you know um just kind of veg and so while I obviously have been doing some stitching I just I haven't really felt like filming um and obviously I didn't actually feel like filming today but I made myself do it so I could get a video out there so hence no makeup um I am not exhausted, but if I don't wear makeup, I feel like I look exhausted on camera. So just so you know, I'm not actually exhausted. I just don't, you just can't see my eyelashes if I don't have mascara on. Um, so we're doing, uh, January is pretty quiet for work. Um, as I've said before, I run Easter Market Main Street, which is a nonprofit organization that um, supports small and local businesses in the, around the area of Easter Market. And, um, so right now the only planning thing that's on my calendar is I'm, we're really gearing up for the cherry blossom festival. And if you've never been, or if you have been to DC during the cherry blossoms, I know some of you who have, who have commented before and watched this channel, um, are from this area or have lived in this area for a while. Um, but if you're not, the cherry blossom festival is a big deal in DC and it's not just the blossoms themselves of the tidal basin, which are very pretty. Um, but there's cherry cheese throughout the city. 
Um, it's actually a really good time to, not in the city, it's in Arlington, Virginia, but the Arlington National Cemetery is very, if that's a place that you wanted to visit, in the spring there are a lot of cherry blossom trees in the cemetery, so it is a very peaceful, reflective, hopeful sort of time to visit um, the Arlington National Cemetery, and it is a, it's a sort of, it's a very reflect reflective sort of vibe there in the spring, I guess, is really the only way I can describe it. Um, so if you have relatives that are in it or you come from a military family, I do, um, and have ever wanted to go, spring is actually a very nice time to do it. Um, the, as well, in Capitol Hill, we have a lot of gardens. Um, it has, Capitol Hill has a very big tree cover, um, tree canopy, that's kind of what I was thinking. Lots of trees, lots of gardens. A lot of people have cherry trees. Like one of the things I'm going to be doing is organizing a walking tours of the neighborhood to view cherry blossoms and other spring flowers. Um, I think it can get a little expensive to visit during the cherry blossom festival, but if you want to wait a little while after the cherry blossoms, spring in general is just the prettiest time to visit DC. I think it's its loveliest season. Um, lots of people plant spring flowers. There's just, and there's also just lots to do that isn't necessarily just the just going to see the cherry blossoms of the tidal basin there's also a big um street festival there's the sakura matsuri i i don't speak japanese so i'm probably mispronouncing that so please forgive me if you do <laughs> um but it's just a street festival um and it's a very big celebration of japanese culture um so you can get a lot of like imports lots of vendors there that have stuff from japan and they also have lots of great street food and it's also usually sponsored by Sapporo, so you can get you can get some Japanese beer. Um, but you can also get the, um, I'm not going to remember what they're called, but I love them. They're like, they're fish-shaped little fried cakes that have a red bean paste inside, and they're very tasty. Um, you can also get, um, like, the fried octopus balls and stuff like that, which, again, I'm not going to remember the name of. Um... But it, but Japanese street food is really fun um, and tasty, so that is a really fun thing to do. And so there's just there's a lot going on. So we're gearing up both for work, doing some cherry blossom stuff around Eastern Market, and then also in my personal life, it's just one of my favorite times because it's just it's been so gray, and like winter here, we don't get the big heavy winters. We did get some snow, which was nice, but we don't get like serious winter. We, in the mid-Atlantic, we get, if we get like a winter storm, it's usually that wintry mix stuff that freezes and makes it dangerous to drive on the roads. Um, so you'll get a lot of like two-hour delay type things because the roads are very icy. Um, but even then, usually, honestly, like January through March, it's just gray. <laughs> it's the gray. The skies are gray. It's rain. It's kind of 50s, 40s. So it's chilly, but it's not like in a fun, super cold kind of way, but it's kind of in a dreary way. So that is, um, yeah, not my favorite time. Um, so then when uh, the cherry blossoms come around, it's the first, like you see, it's the first color that comes up. It tends to also coincide with like the first crocuses and stuff coming up in people's yards. So like the very early spring flowers. So it's just, and then everyone decorates for it. There's a, there's a really fun thing, the petal porch um, parade or petal porch, porch petal. Anyway, it's a contest in Capitol Hill where people decorate their porches and yards for the Cherry Blossom Festival. Just pink. Uh, so it's just this fun explosion of color. It's like everybody's coming alive again after the dreary winter, after the hibernation season. So it's just, it's just a really nice time. It's really fun. Um, so I'm really looking forward to that. I really like the Cherry Blossom Festival. Um, other than that, in part of my sort of just hibernation, I've just been reading. Um, not anything particularly good that I would really rely on. Although I did read the, I did finish the third Crescent City book that Sarah J. Moss just came out with. Um, I read it really quickly because I read really fast, so I'm not actually going to say anything about it because uh, I don't want to give out spoilers. Um, all I'll say is in that series, the first book was actually my favorite, and I think it's one of, plot-wise, I think it's my favorite book of hers. 
that Sarah J. Moss has written. Uh, my favorite character is still in the Court of Thorns and Roses series. Um, but I think the whole plot and the pacing of the first Crescent City book is excellent. Um, and then the rest of that series has been good, but not as good as the first one, uh, in my opinion. And that's, again, just my opinion. Um, the other book I'm currently reading is a nonfiction book that's about, like, the history of civilization through border walls. Um, going back to, like, ancient civilization and looking at the conflict between, like, nomadic, um, like, the Huns and, um, earlier nomadic tribes, the conflict between those and city dwellers within walled cities and then walled areas and, um, it's interesting. I don't know that I, if you, if you like history and you like ancient history and you want to, and you're curious about it, I am happy to drop, um, I'll put in the description what the book titles are that I talked about. And I'm also reading The Manning Tree Witches, which is a non-fiction, no, I'm sorry, it is a fiction book, but it's about true events that happened in Essex, I want to say, in England, where there were some really notorious witch trials. Um, and there was a gentleman by the name of Matthew Hopgood, who was the Witchfinder General, who basically got paid to find witches. So, you know, that uh, resulted in a lot of murders, essentially. Um, but the Manning Tree Witches is told through the lens of a couple of the people who were targeted. Um, so it's uh, it's a really beautiful... It's densely written in a sense of the prose is very sort of poetic as you read it, but it is very good. But I'll drop the title and everything uh, down below. So that is that is where we are on life updates. Oh, I, I meant to mention my... I don't remember if it was in my last video or not, but my niece, who is in her mid-20s, late-20s... God, my niece is in her late-20s. I'm not okay with that. Anyway, she has... Uh, now, two daughters. Um, the first one, Mia, is she just turned five uh, this past December. Uh, and also born in December is our new baby grandniece, uh, whose name is Lila. So it was nice to go up and see them. And I can't remember if I said that in my life. I can't remember when I filmed my last video. Sorry. I know it was in December, but I don't remember if it was before I traveled for the holidays or after. So... If this is a repeat, forgive me, but I have two baby grandnieces, so that is, uh, that's fun. Okay, um, I can't think of anything else to add, so I think that is it, and I think we will wrap here and let you go, uh, watch all the floss tube. I have so much floss tube to watch. I, lots of people did whip parades, which was really fun, but I just, my floss tube was nothing but whip parades, and, um, and things like that so I just I have a lot of catch-up to do <laughs> it's also like and there was just so much flossmas and stuff I just couldn't keep track of it all so I decided to not do either of those things I may do a whip parade but I may do like a mid-year whip parade maybe <laughs> maybe something like that um, when there's not so many already going around uh, so it just stopped recording on me for a second uh, so no my software is being weird, so I'm going to go just say like and subscribe. Our D&D uh, &D thing that we had talked about before about doing our live play um, is live, and I will link to that below. So if you are into Dungeons and & Dragons and you are curious to check out that, uh, I would encourage you to do so. It's really fun. It's really funny. Um, and it's all about giving newbie game masters the tools that they need to take away for their own games. So I would uh, I would highly recommend it. And again, I will link to that below. So if you did I like that, I'm sorry if this is a repeat of what I just said, because it stopped recording on me twice, and now it's recording again, and I don't understand what's going on here. So forgive me if this is a repeat of anything. But um, if you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, do that, all that fun YouTube stuff um, in the comments. I love chatting to people. So, you know, tell me what we're, you're working on. Tell me what gets you through the winter. Um, and I will see you next time. Thanks, everybody.